today this is this is this video is a third part in um, in a series of uh, uh, displaying f to you lectures the lecture that happened last um, Thursday on campus so you can read for yourselves the objectives of the of this PowerPoint but I would uh, more or less like to do what I would like to do here in this video is to focus your attention on ICT and specifically on ready-made games available online and I'm using the ones that are free available through Google but I'm sure there's Scooter and there are other <coughs> websites, educational websites and schools have their own websites so there's plenty of games out there but I, what I wanted to do is to show you how you can actually give them more central place in your learning activity rather than just add-ons just at the end of whatever you have been doing then students attach references to some ICT games well we can actually make them more central so my idea here is to show you an innovative way to do this and um, <coughs> illustrate to you also that you can actually with a simple tool like PowerPoint and Smartboard is not much different in functionality uh, than PowerPoint so whether it is smartboard software or PowerPoint with tools like this you can incorporate things in interesting ways okay so let's move on so this activity it's a learning activity it can be used in a literacy context where um, the objective is actually for us to meet our village to learn about our community who is there what people do and um, so I used for this purpose the drawings created by Natasha Hardy I thought I found them very inspiring so thank you Natasha for that and let's have a look what I created just using simple thing like a PowerPoint and yet in an imaginative way you can actually work with it so the title of our okay so you can use it in a literacy context and if an activity is broken down into lots of um, smaller activities with lots of feedback given and s assistance and I'll show you how this is very useful uh, for ESL students as well if you happen to do ESL teaching yourself uh, do not ever feel that you actually have to be pushed to become a live grammar book for your ESL students um, you can actually create wonderful uh, act activities with the PowerPoint, with SmartBoard, and in that way engage students in fun games, in fine fun doing things, so that the entire experience is just pleasure. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a learning activity that says "Meet our village," and it says we live in New South Wales. This particular community, and they say find us in New South Wales. Well clearly we have to click we just can't help it we have to click let's have a look and it takes us to a game Oop. oh we got that right Northern Territory what we got it right well we have to find New South Wales Victoria let's get it wrong whoops we got it wrong Tasmania? Okay, we're just gonna get it right. And New South Wales is not coming, is it? South Australia? Well, let's get it wrong. Maybe here? Well, <laughs> we got two wrong. Oh, this is not really happy. Western Australia, how about getting it right? You see how the right ones become blue? Victoria. Well, I'm myself not that strong. South Australia and Victoria are the same thing to me. Uh, New South Wales, cool, the last day, so that's where the village is. Okay, now we can go back. After we've done this activity, and we now know for sure where New South Wales is, but you see how much students are learning. Depends on the age, but it is a good activity for all students to actually come to terms which state is where and how you spell them and so on. It's, it's, it never hurts. Let's go further. And here's our community. Now in the PowerPoint that I created for our students on campus, I actually made little pictures. I actually copied a little the little girl here on the on the picture too and actually 
pasted her back again and created out of her a hot link so um, to for students to basically explore the community by clicking on figures and and tables and dogs and anything that is here but because not all of you have these tools that would allow you to actually copy the girl and paste her on top of this picture uh, play with the with the backgrounds and make her and make her at the front put her at the front uh, and and then uh, make a link or hyperlink to that picture and because the, the you superimpose your uh, copied picture or pasted picture on the girl nobody who's seeing actually the final outcome can tell the difference that there was actually um, and copy and paste job done here but I did it now in a way that it's very very easy for you it's very easy for you to put arrows on top of pictures so let's have a look we'll just start maybe with children let's have a look what happens we go to children oh we didn't just get to children we went to my community our people right so we've got adults here we've got children we've got the heroes here of our story well, let's um now I know what's in here right so look see who we are and what we're doing if, if a child clicks on the speaker your recorded voice would say see who we are and what we do isn't it cool and you can actually make a make a little speaker for them to record their own voice here because it's just nice to do that okay so let's go to the girl and this is Cheng Cheng loves eating again what's missing here is the speaker that actually says these things check out Cheng cooking okay so no price this for actually guessing what's gonna be here but I forgot to put the speaker I probably was, was just busy doing all of these uh, bits of lectures and um, just forgot to put it but the more things you attach like a speaker and a, and a thing for a child to record themselves as well the more playful the slide is okay so let's check what will happen when we click on Cheng cooking So the game is loading itself. It takes a bit of a w time. Okay, let's play. We can go to Chinese fried rice. Okay. So I didn't go through the game because you know per perfectly well um, these cooking games by now because I have shown to you before. But children can play these cooking games, they learn vocabulary, they have fun. You can actually help them with it, take it very lightly and so on. But now you can do a little bit more focused activities. Now, there's another part to this video where you actually will do even more focused activities. So from very, notice how we're playing from a very light level, go and play activity. We help them a little bit with understanding what these words mean and what to click and so on. Now we say to them, did you watch it? We sh there should be a speaker again asking the child that, so that the child can actually hear it, not just read it. Another mistake in this PowerPoint. So did you watch it? Did you watch it? So the children click. <gasps> and do you remember the layout? This is not the happiest layout on the planet, but I just copied Sam's games, which are on our, which is the, the game. Some students said that it, they don't know where, the where to find the game. It's on our education hub under ESL activities not the online um, games but one link above because we have the things there which we constructed and then we have the things there that actually are links to ready-made materials so here you can actually uh, engage uh, um, your students in active in an activity in, a, in an activity that focuses them on the language so did you open the link so you can actually if you click on the speaker next to the text they can hear you like in the same Sam's game um, they can hear you actually say did you open the link what happened did you click on play uh, what was she cooking and they can tell you things and then you can take them to next step writing the things and recording their voice next to it and so on I wouldn't make at this stage a, big, a bigger drama, a, a much of a drama with grammar. I would just actually, especially with younger children, that just doesn't work. They just learn, just like your own Anglo-Saxon children. I mean, you only don't have children. Many of you don't, but some of you already do. Just like your own children, just like young children, all young children, what they all learn just by playing, interacting, and that's what we have to provide: play and interacting. 
okay so the help here systems you dive, you don't leave a child and uh, that's the question mark here you don't leave a student always just on um, alone to answer did you open the link you can actually under the help file this is a um, hot word or hot link pardon me uh, I didn't actually create any help files here but in Sam's game we had ways in which we actually provided support for the student how to answer did you open the link so the help file took students to the to the uh, picture with the front of the game or even to the game so that a child would understand yeah that they did open the link and did you click on play and you can show them how the play looks like and they would say yes I did and you can actually guide them through it so a lot of um, the more interaction you pre create just with this one little dialogue here which is on this slide and you can you can break it down in as many thing ways you can actually think of in order to support students in actually understanding what you're saying in saying it what you, in saying exactly the same what you're saying so repeating after you or actually recording their own answers um, writing down their own story about it how what actually Chang was cooking and you supporting them through it by guiding them just like in Sam's game so if you can go to Sam's game for ideas where I actually try to break it down a little bit more then it will be very valuable but <coughs> you can see from w one single game can give us a resource now that we can do a little bit of talking, a little bit of writing, a little bit of playing with what happened actually with Chang. Okay, so let's go back now. So we had a look at Chang. Let's have a look who else is here. This is another boy here. I have created an activity, again a cooking activity. So this particular boy on the left, he's playing also in the kitchen. This girl, Chinese girl, I'm, I have uh, inserted on uh, Education Hub a lot of links which are English Chinese, like for example the Snow um, White. There's a book there which is Chinese and English. So these are wonderful mo um, uh, resources that actually cover, uh, take care of two languages. Let's have a look what I put here because I can't remember. Oh, I now remember what I have here. Look at that. The Chinese girls or Japanese girls watching things. Now, isn't this wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to actually check the YouTube and have a look? There's three million of children's stories or fables or nursery rhymes on YouTube and you could actually make a good use out of them. So the Japanese girl was naughty and she watched the lion, um, the king lion and the mouse in her own language. Wasn't it cute? Lovely. Okay see who we are and what we do here again speaker is here so you can so children can not just actually read it but they can actually hear it at the same time here's um, a link to another game this man is actually a baker and when you click on it it takes you to a game that will teach you the game teaches you how to make a baguette <laughs> We will give a miss to it. Okay, so it's beautiful. Play. You can click on play. And it's wonderful. I'm not sure whether it's year eight. Don't know what that means, whether it's year eight or anything else. But anyhow, so it's a wonderful game that teaches you how to make a French baguette. And it's actually quite excellent, this game. Okay, so that one was a baker. This guy is a car mechanic. You can click yourselves on it and you'll see it takes you to a game which doesn't have words, but it has plenty of action. So you can actually create innovative, interactive activities with your students, asking them what the mechanic is doing and lots of questions around it and so on. So and children can talk about it, they can write it down and so on. 
just basically describing what the person is doing. Is it in, in a context? Yes, it is in the context. The activity is basically saying, what do you see? Tell us what you've seen. This man, I forgot what he does. So if this one is, so this one is, if, if one of them is a car mechanic, the other one is something else. I can't remember. You can click on it. But this game here is very interesting. Who is this man on the right? The tall man. If you click on it, it takes you to a very interesting game. And if you panic, thinking that students can't do it because they are, the language is too uh, sophisticated, actually they can, but uh, you can actually drop not pay attention to every word you hear in this particular game, but only focus on the ones that you think that are important. Okay. Welcome to virtual knee surgery. This activity will show you the process of replacing a failing knee joint. Are you ready? Today, our patient is a 76-year-old man. It is mandatory to check the patient's vital signs before beginning surgery. An anesthesiologist in the operating room performs this step. If the patient's vital signs are not in the normal ranges, we will not proceed with the surgery. Using the healthy person's vital sign chart as a reference... Yeah, you can focus on that. Today? Right, so no big deal here to check 75 beats per minute of the heart rate and also the blood pressure. I mean, you can, you can play with the um, complexity of this game however you wish. So, what else is in our community? Here's my si me, my sister, Fido, and our house, okay? So, this, the speaker is here for students to hear what actually this text is saying. And then let's go to this picture and let's explore the house. So, here is me. Now, I've I used here a game that was actually suggested by one of our students. I forgot your name, I'm very sorry. I can't remember everyone's name just um, very quickly. But this is a game. Who am I? What is my pet? Kitchen, bathroom. I'm sure many of you have actually seen this game. Cute game. And the, and the person can actually describe themselves who they are. Okay. Well, let's go back to the PowerPoint. I'm not saying the games I chose are the coolest game on the planet. But they will do just to make, at least to make uh, the point. My sister. Quite like this game. It has both. It, it, it engages students with actually cr creatively, but at the same time, it has some language in it. In fact, quite sophisticated language. So, um, yeah, I gave it a thumb up. So, you see, there are a few things that she has to put on. And one has to make a decision about this time about the bag and the head, you know, you, about the design. You want this design, this design, and so on. So then about the dress, about texture, whether you want this texture. It's a lovely word, so this texture. Um, now, I'm not three or six, so I'm not really good at playing these games, but you get the point. We still have two characters left here at my house. So let's have a look what happens at his house. Whoops, don't know what that was. Let's do it again. Ah, and now, are they still watching in Japanese, Nice. It was a hot summer's day, and the lion, tired after a long, hard chase, fell asleep under the shade of a tree. Okay, so there must be a, one popular text. Everybody is watching the same story. Okay. So, you can get a pretty good idea now what I want to do with all this. So, um, for example, here we have what are they building? So, that's actually a game where I take students to actually have a look at the hospital. And there you can create actually a series of activities. Let's have a look at this game. It's quite good. It looks quite mundane. But in fact, you can do a lot of things with it. So what's happening? We're at the hospital. How do we know that we're in hospital? Because these two ladies have, they look like nurses. And children have to now equip this hospital in a proper way so that things are actually in the right places. Um, now, I have no idea how a hospital looks like, which is a pro probably lucky me. Um, 
I don't know where to put this thing here. Looks good. Okay, so you can actually discuss with students the names of all of these things and so on. So first we just play. We, you can actually, as you write, as you actually talk and play, and, and whether students play on their own tablets as well or just with your, pa with your um, smart board, doesn't matter. Um, you can actually at the same time write on, this, on the side of a, of a smart board or of a whiteboard some words you actually are using in order to actually name the objects. No big deal out of it, just for memory. What's this thing here? It's a lamp, isn't it cool? Okay, and later on you can produce just like with Sam, those comp not, not comprehension, but those engaging in it, in talking and therefore in writing as well and in speaking exercises asking students so what was it? it was her hospital how could you tell what was on the ground floor how could you tell it was a reception what what is a reception what happens in the reception and so on you can just have so much interactivity here and so much joy now this one here the supermarket i'm you notice this is supermarket this is pizza this is mcdonald and this is a playground, I think, or I can't tell what it is. Um, but anyhow, if you click on this link here, it takes you to the most crazy game. <laughs> we had a f we had a lot of fun in on campus um, playing it. Okay, so I've got 60 seconds to put stuff in this trolley, and while all of you might be seeing this flashing play. Well, I was clicking on trolley until there was, there was, I mean, until I actually had to reload the game. I never saw this play button, but you can see, they tell us we need to buy six red apples and this is how they're going to look like. It's important to see that play this game. You can ask students, point it, where's the carton of milk? Here. A, where is the foamy soap? Here. Okay. There you go. And the game is really mad, so you can try it yourselves. So after your students have gone and explored all the possible places, there's another game which I didn't click on, I forgot, but there's one where the community, actually the community that you see here in front of the house, they, they're actually decorating the house together, so you'll be going through the exercise of how to decorate the house. Um, there is a gardening uh, game which I included too, so when you click on the garden you actually go to the gardening game. And then there is another house on the left um, which I used in order to actually um, point students to another game which is decorating a coffee shop. Uh, it, it has a lot of furniture, a lot of action going, put the, ta put the table here and a stool here and uh, the waitress there and so on. A lot of a lot of things that you can talk about, you can play, you can actually have um, quite a busy time uh, organizing the coffee shop and it's quite fun. Okay, so what's the point in all of that? In all of that the point is that you have warmed up the student because as I often say, students until they actually are hands-on involved and engage with their little hearts and not just with uh, little brains but also with their little hearts, they are warmed up, you have warmed up their brain, they are all going and now you can ask them what is your village like? And of course they're speechless. So you could approach the task in a multitude of ways in which they will actually describe to you your village. What I did, I actually used the same picture as Natasha created and, well, I suggested to use in this PowerPoint to use the same picture as Natasha ha first gave us and basically now students creating their little stories or maybe links to different games about each of the items they want to actually use to describe what is in their village. I strongly suggest that you actually give them some links so uh, that describe people to different games or to different texts or to different support systems you, you have actually created for your students so that they are not alone with this task. So you can see how many things you could create around this little activity. First you explore in depth every item that is in the community and students actually not just check but then actually engage in understanding of it, talking about it, recording themselves talking about it and now they are to tell their own story about their community. So literally a semester-long activity and all of them 
uh, and, and basically ICT is very central in, uh, in completing this activity because we take them to different links, they explore those li different links and they talk about them and PowerPoint is there with support systems as well that you put in there in place. Wonderful interactive semester. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this bit. In class, of course, students ask me what to do with the Lion, Ki uh, Lion King and the mouse. And I was saying, well, if anything, try to steer away from the conventional uh, ways in which you start your activities and you say, we will put them quietly on the mat and then me will be taking the book and reading it to them. It is a pretty much um, old-fashioned way and um, and maybe okay in, in certain classrooms, I have no idea, but this is, this is, these are assignments and as you can see yourselves, I am taking you so much forward away from textbooks because language teaching is changing every day, every day is a new idea, every day is a new application, every day something is happening, I want you to be ready for your teaching with those new tools with this new knowledge as opposed to reading that language is social but you have no implications of it um, ready to go. So what's happening here, ha we were discussing in class, so how would you Anya introduce Lion's, Lion um, King? Well first of all I would blow it on the smart board and I wouldn't read it. I would ask my students to have the, I mean th we're talking ideal world, what, how you adjust to it, you can adjust in many different ways but let's imagine an ideal world. I would like my students to have their computers in front of them, their tablets, you name it. Or computers are better for me because computers can do more things. And we play the first sentence, the Lion King, I'm just making it up, okay, was big and confident. And here it is, big and confident. Nothing, nothing can happen to him, he's so big. And then I wouldn't rush through the story. I would love the sentence that Lion King is big and confident. Why is he big? Because lions are big. Why is he confident? Because he's the king of the jungle and so on. So you play with the whole, you, you, you don't have to finish reading of the story on the day one in lesson one. Go to Google, find pictures of the lion, put it in your PowerPoint. Everyone is putting their little picture of the lion in their PowerPoint. And you can write next to the lion. The lion is big and confident. Now I can guarantee it to you that there will be three children in your class who will write something else. Let go. <laughs> and then ask everybody to record their voices to say the lion was big and confident. And of course I can also guarantee it to you that three quarter of children will say the man was big and confident. <laughs> and this is a wonderful opportunity to teach students what? This is not how the story, how, how stories are said, right? When we say, when we tell a story, we have to create the mystery moment. And of course, then students have to slow down. And what a wonderful opportunity for us to make our ESL students aware of pronunciation because a lot of problems with pronunciation happen because children hurry. Sometimes they actually do speak English very well, like for example me. I actually hurry through the sentence, then I don't remember to aspirate, I don't remember to say the th, th, I just do something to it horrible, and so on. So when children actually hurry through the sentence, the, the, they reinforce their bad, bad accent. But as I said to you a thousand times, English is low and slow, low, slow, right? French is like this, really high. Polish is probably even higher, but English is not. Hillary Clinton, because American English is even lower, I mean, a lot of American women sound like men to people from Europe because that's how low pitch American English is, okay? So English is really low pitch language and it's also slow. So when we put the picture of the lion, we record our voices, we say the lion was big and confident, it's our pronunciation lesson. Isn't it wonderful? And the whole thing took half an hour, or well, maybe 20 minutes, maybe 10. Big deal. Nobody says to us, we have to cover Lion King in one lesson. 
we can now take the next shot and what happened? And the lion saw a little whatever was walking on him, a little mouse, right? And so on. You can get, go on with creative engagement of students in the story without necessarily hurrying, without necessarily putting them quietly on the map, without trying what I'm trying to inspire you to do is to think differently differently so that people just want to do it as opposed to only the ones who are good or tired okay